Hello Rabbitohs members and supporters and welcome to another edition of the Rabbitohs Insider. Let's get straight into it this week and head over to the Red Fern Bubble with Mark Ellison and John Sutton for this week's Playmakers segment proudly brought to you by Zoom Video Communications. Hello and once again we thank Zoom Video Communications for bringing us the Playmakers this week. John Sutton's with me again to dissect the game at Leichhardt on the weekend with no crowd, mate. Yeah, it was a bit weird, no crowd. You can hear all the hits, uh, all the talk out there. But, um, you know, we had to bring our own energy and um, build into the game, and we did that. You being a player, you played in some great crowds, you played in the grand final, it was a full house and that. What sort of influence does a crowd have on your performance? I think it brings a lot of energy and it gets you fired up and. Um, you know, without that, you know, you have to build your own energy within the team and, um, you know, we did that really well in the first half. I think, you know, the second half was, a, you know, letting in a few tries and, you know, we're not happy with that. So, we're going back to that first half, it was a, you know, dominant first half with, um, you know, a lot of tries and our D was really good. So, we need to take that into next week's game. I think one of the standouts for us on the weekend was, was big stretch, Campbell Graham. I mean, Campbell, you had a broken hand there, missed a few games, and was carried a few niggly injuries earlier. He's come back, had the bye, and come out really fresh on the weekend. I think we'll, we're going to see some even better footy out of him for the back end of the year. Yeah, still a young fella, but very smart. Knows what he needs to do. Um, he's been terrific in defence, and you know now he's crossing the line as well. So um, he's just gone from strength to strength, and uh, I'm really excited to see what Campbell can do this back end of the year. Now you're talking about his defence. When he hits someone, he gets that shoulder in there and, you know, he goes in, he's very aggressive. And he's trying to make his mark, particularly in opposition centres and back rowers. He's done a great job so far and I think he'll get better as the year goes on. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think he's only, what, 23 years old. Um, he's got a lot to learn, but the way he's playing, um, we need that from him. And um, he's gone from strength to strength. I think we forget how old he is sometimes. He's been around for so long now, but yeah, he's, he's only getting better as, as, as the games go on. And then our next one, another local junior that's come through, right through the grades, Cam Murray. We, we notice the difference when he plays with us. Yeah, we talk about Cam a lot because he's always in the thick of things. Um, you know, his defence is great. And the way he can uh, hold that middle and just give Cody and Renault and Latrell um, the service they need on the edges is second to none. Um, you know, he's one of the best players in the game and, you know, he just goes, he goes from strength to strength every game. Yeah, we go back to our first half and, you know, we saw, scored some great tries, we had full control of the game, but I think, again, it was our defence that put us in that position. We we're, were hitting them hard and, you know, stopping their yardage sets, you know, 10, 20 metres out, so they'd do a lot of kicking from inside their half. Um, that really set up our um, attack. Um, it gets it flowing, but you know our second half wasn't too great, Marcus. So um, you know we've got to look to fix that up, and I'm sure the boys will work hard on that. More a mindset, I think, the second half, wasn't it? But it, again, we, we've said it a few times this year already. And if we want to compete at the highest level, which I'm sure we can, we need to be doing it in these games as well. Yeah, definitely. If you look at um, Melbourne and Penrith, they're playing for the full 80 at the moment. So. We will get there. Um, there's still a lot of footy to be played and we'll strike at the end of the year when it's, when it's time to do that. Yeah. And we look forward to coming up against the Cowboys this weekend. Another game for us. Without our Origin Stars and we wish them all the best on the weekend. They've done a great job for their respective states and us as well during the season. We wish them all the best on the, on, uh, the following week. But it's the Rabbitohs against the Cowboys this Friday night. So make sure you support us. We'll be out there to put on a good show again. NAIDOC stands for National Aboriginal Islanders Day Observance Committee. Um, NAIDOC for me is um, you know, just a week of celebration, you know, longest living culture in the world, 60,000 years. Um, you know, proud Aboriginal Heritage Club. You know, we're in the heart of Redfern, which is a massive you know, Aboriginal population here. And, um, you know, it's a black fella team, you know, it's, 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 it's what you want to be a part of. It's the pinnacle rugby league for an indigenous player to play, to play at the Rabbitohs. What now means to me is the blood running through my veins. It means this to me. It means my culture. It's a day where um, people, different people from other types of like clans and 
nationality can come along on a, on a journey to um, learn about our culture, get to know more, and for us have regionals um, to express our art, our ways, and our survival, our survival or how we lived and stuff like that. Uh, for me personally, I think it's a great way to celebrate uh, the good things that Aboriginal people are doing in our country and reflect um, and recognise you know, the excellence of our Aboriginal people. So it's something that's very sincere and important for me. Hi, my name is Shalom and Dan and I'm proud Bunjilong woman from my eagle. NAIDOC means to me is when we all come together and celebrate Aboriginal culture, which includes not Indigenous people. Obviously for the club, we've got a lot of Indigenous players in the past and we're connected to a lot of you know, people in Redfern community and the South uh, community, a lot of Indigenous people, so it means a lot to all of us celebrating. What NAIDOC means to me is for all Australians and Torres Strait Islander people across Australia to come together to be proud of who we are and where we come from. NAIDOC to me and my family is all of us connecting and representing our culture through activities and ceremonies. NAIDOC to me means the blood running through my veins. It gives me a chance to show off my culture and who I am. I guess for us it's, it's not really a week, it's, it's a lifestyle and, and how we live. But I think um, for NAIDOC week is just about um, showing our culture and I guess um, how, how special it is. And um, it, a lot of it's about family, and like I said, connection um, with the land. and. NAIDOC to me is when we come together to celebrate our culture by doing dances, singing and just, you know, connecting together for um, our people and for our culture. Yeah, it means um, probably everything, I suppose, uh, the week. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity for, you know, not only myself, but um, my, my family and everyone like that to, to celebrate um, what a great culture we're a part of. Um, but we, we sort of live it every day, so. Um, I think the week's about um, you know, people from um, outside backgrounds in terms of you know, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, people from outside of that embracing our culture, being a part of a, a special week in, in our lives um, and really embracing the, the oldest living culture in the world. I think that's, um, that's what NAIDOC week means to me because I, I live it every, every day and um, every, I suppose I, I me and my family live it every day as well, so uh, I think it's a great opportunity for um, people that are not Aboriginal and not Torres Strait Islanders to embrace what a beautiful culture we have. This year's theme is Heal Country, Heal Our Nation. When I hear Heal Country is that uh, wherever you are, wherever you live, work, uh, you make sure you respect that uh, community's past, present, uh, their customs, their laws. Hill Country calls on all of us to protect our land, our waterways, our sacred sites and cultural heritage across Australia. Hill Country means to me uh, just reconnecting with our land and its people and coming together for a brighter future. You just got to um, respect where you are and, and I think the best way to respect it is about learning about it, um, whether you're Indigenous or non-Indigenous. Talk to local elders and understand that, um, you know, what Indigenous people did and how they connected to not only each other but to the land. What this means to me and my family as we are saltwater Aboriginal people, we need to protect and preserve the land and sea. This is so important to us as we love to fish and die for our food. And I'm grateful that I have traditional knowledge handed down to me from my family elders. The country of Australia itself uh, is very healing to the Indigenous people. Obviously a lot of people um, yeah, connect to the land, the connection to country itself uh, it really you know, lifts their spirits and they get that sense of healing from, from being where they're from and uh, you know, breathing in the air and you know, feeling the, the country, the soil on, on their feet. Our country has a lot to do with our identity. Our country is something that is a part of our culture. We connect through, you know, through spiritually as well. You know, we have to look after our country. We have to connect to our country. In our culture, we connect with our country a lot and we relied off the land. So I think that we need to give back to the land by looking after it. You know, as is Aboriginal people, uh, this country is so important to us because we've survived on it um, for over 65,000 years. So, you know, you see things that are happening in the, 
in Australia at the moment. Um, you know, we're trying to change that and we're trying to, you know, heal a lot of the um, stuff that's gone on in the past and the transgenerational trauma and stuff like that. It means to me that everyone heals together through all the trauma that's been happening in Australia. In order to heal our future, I feel as though you have to heal yourself. Um, and that's, you know, with all the generational trauma that's, um, that's happened in, in our lives, um, I feel as though it's a great opportunity for us to heal ourselves in order for us to heal the future. I mean, obviously, it's a historic ground in here, so you know there's a bit, a bit of history that's in this um, in this community, and obviously healing and um, you know getting everything that's going bad in, in this world, and obviously in this community, like the drugs and alcohol, and healing and coming back to you know who we are as human beings. I think it's a big part of moving forward. Here's what you need to know about our round 17 clash against the Cowboys, brought to you by WhatIf.com proud travel partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Did you know Rabbitohs fans have travelled to over 183 cities and towns across 16 countries for holidays, work and of course to see the team play using whatif.com forward slash Rabbitohs. The Cowboys will be hoping to bounce back after they let in seven unanswered tries when they went down to the Knights 38-0, their equal biggest loss of the season. Only time will decide what Cowboys side turns up on the day. The Rabbitohs will be missing five stars to origin duty, while the Cowboys will be without three of theirs. With both New South Wales and Queensland Cups postponed, no doubt whoever steps up into these spots will be biting at the bit to put on a show. The Cowboys will be joined by head coach Todd Payton when they take on the Rabbitohs. Payton's initial two-week isolation period was reduced to one after it was deemed he was no longer a close contact. The Rabbitohs have had complete dominance over the Cowboys for the last three seasons, not having lost a game to the Far North competitors since round 19, 2017. Will this winning streak continue? Remember, members get 15% off selected hotels through whatif.com forward slash Rabbitohs. Use promo code Rabbitohs15 to enjoy these exclusive benefits. I honestly believe that 20 teams are far too many in the rugby league competition at the moment. And I think if we could get to a situation where there's 12 or 14 in a couple of years' time, I think everybody would be happy. I remember as a player thinking, if we play well, if we make the semis, how can they possibly get rid of us? We had the biggest pack in the comp, you know. We had five guys that were six foot five, which back in those days was a massive pack. From day one, we were on the chopping block. We're not going to go away. We're going to ride this storm and we're going to stick at it. With the new criteria of the league, uh, the NRL's established, we're going to need a lot more money. You may as well forget it. You don't have a case or merge. All decided that we should uh, shake it up, that we should uh, take on the old board. We decided that Group 14 was what we'd call ourselves because we were the supporters of South Sydney. When you actually looked at what was going on, the fix is in. The NRL is... Uh... Uh, took us out of the competition for the year 2000. News Limited had no idea what they were getting into. Without George, there was no fight. For the fight in the trenches, in the dirt, in the slugfest, he was your man. If George has got a stance, he will stand there and he won't let go and he'll punch on till the end. One thing Mr Murdoch's got to realise, this is not about big business, this is about sport. And sport belongs to the people. Three, two, one, march. And they were coming and coming, it, was, it wasn't stopping. And I was thinking, geez, this is a lot bigger than what I thought was going to happen here. And that's when we started the movement. We were all plunging into darkness. We had no idea where this was going to take us. Because they were looking for us to put on the table that we had $10 million. You can't do it. We get the 10 million and the court case moves on. The publicist rang our publicist and said, I've got three words for you, Rupert's gone nuclear. There's a good lesson in not taking things for granted. It's very important that we, we have the South continuing on. And to take on a fight that was so right, so hard, so apparently unwinnable. They all admitted that they'd stuffed up. They knew they made one of the biggest mistakes in sports history. For Souths to be kicked out, it was, it was like a punch in the guts. It was, uh, and worse. I'm immensely proud that the, the club was able to do what it did. Limited resources, but just called on people power. And you can't buy that, and you can't sell it. <laughs> that feeling is just fantastic. That's why it's great to be a South supporter. That's the three toughest years of my life.
It invokes so much passion, so much joy. It's hard for, for the younger people today to, to realise what it meant for us to be reinstated. Three cheers for George. Yeah.